Evening Cherries fans and welcome to this new feature on Up the Cherries in All Departments. In this show, we will be focusing on individual teams and their seasons so far. Initially, focusing at those around the top of the championship, of course, where we're competing. In this show, we'll be focusing on Norwich, a side who have dropped into the championship with us, but one that definitely look on course for a return to the Premier League at the first time of asking. So let's focus on the Canaries and what they've done right following their relegation. And it's a pleasure to welcome onto this show, Rob Romans. Evening, Rob. How Hi, are Craig. you? Thank you for... oh, very good, Craig. Thank you for inviting me. Not a problem at all. And thank you for coming on. Uh, mm -hmm. So let's firstly have a little look at Norwich mm. and what mm. happened last season. You had some very good results during the last season. Um, you beat Man City 3-2 at Carrow Road and Everton 2-0 yep. at Goodison. Yep. But was the problem the lack of quality or was it a struggle to adapt to the Premier League? I think it was a number of things, really. I mean, first and foremost, if I look back um, to the summer of 2019 when we went up, Daniel Farker, our manager, um, was given very little in the way of a transfer budget to work with. Um, and it was very well known at the time. I mean, the club were very honest with the fans and um, everybody else. And they said, look, we, we haven't got any money to spend on transfers because we're still paying for um, various misdemeanors um, previously. So, I mean, to be fair, Farker was up against it right from the start with what he had to work with. So, I mean, that was, I'd say, say you know reason why things didn't work out but I do think there were others if I go back to the start of that season um it was great fun to watch I mean opening night of the season we lost 4-1 at Anfield and despite um you know losing you know 4-1 we didn't play that badly but a week later we played Newcastle at home we played them off the pitch we beat them 3-1 um, you know, that was when followed. I just had to look at the fixture list there to remind me about who we played. But, I mean, two defeats against Chelsea and West Ham. The Chelsea game, OK, they were better than us. You could live with it. West Ham away, OK, not very good. But then after that, we played Man City at home and we won 3-2. Um, we had six points and things looked to be going quite well. But if I cast my mind back to what happened next... I think was a few injuries and a few bad performances and that was it really things started to slide from there really um if i look at the the approach we had the style of football we played um again i mean if i look at motion season 2018 2019 we were great fun to watch um i mean the the attitude was i mean if somebody was going to score two goals we would score three or if somebody scored three we would score four and that did happen on a few occasions um now while that was good fun to watch um it did you know pose questions and things about our our game management and things and that unfortunately was an area where we were found wanting last season so I think all in all really I mean it was a number of different things really which led to that relegation happening so yeah that was it really and of course um we played in that style and mm. we would always outscore teams so yep. um going back a couple of seasons ago of course there was the 4-3 win against Liverpool um yep. you know again a fantastic result against a big big side but we last season personally I think that we changed and moved away from that mm. and I think that mm. might have been okay yeah we can talk about Hawkeye and that goal mm. that should have counted between Sheffield United and uh, Aston Villa yep. but moving away from the we'll score one more than you Mm -hmm. approach I think really set us on the downward turn what, what was mm -hmm. your view of Bournemouth um, last season well before I go on to my view of Bournemouth last season you've just raised a very interesting point about video assistant um, refereeing now I can think of a few occasions during that season when VAR cheated us out of a couple of goals and things but yeah I mean less said about that the better um, I think for me looking at Bournemouth last season um, part of me did wonder how long Bournemouth would manage to sustain themselves in that league because it's, I mean, quite a small club, quite a small stadium. 
And I mean, despite the fact that, you know, they are backed by um, a billionaire, um, yes. you know, Russian oligarch sort of character. Um, I mean, Eddie Howe did always manage to keep them up um, some way, shape or form. And I mean, you've seen sides doing that in the premiership for ages and you do start to wonder are they going to evolve or are they going to regress and go backwards um i mean i look at bolton blackburn portsmouth sides like that in recent years i mean okay i know there were some i mean in portsmouth case there were a few things behind the scenes which led to them coming out of the premiership which contributed to that of course um so yes i mean I mean, when I saw, I mean, when you look at the squad Bournemouth had, I mean, parting, part of me was a little bit shocked that they did go down. But to be fair, when I look at the way things have been changing, I wasn't that surprised to see it happen. Um, and also, I mean, if you're going to spend £25 million on Dominic Solanka as well, and £15 million on Jordan Ibe, um, I mean, I mean, when you look at what, I mean, those two have produced in a Bournemouth shirt, um, in recent times, I mean, you do start to wonder what's going on here. I think Solanke uh, this level has done very, very well. Um, yeah, yeah. I think he's he's performed well, and he's not a twenty goal a season striker. What he does bring to the side, though, is mm. he holds the ball up and mm. gives opportunities to other players. And those other players recently yeah. haven't been putting in the goals that they were earlier in the season. Um, yeah. For example, you know, one of the games was the 4-2 win against Reading. And that game, Bournemouth were 2-0 down, but turned mm-hmm. it straight on its head. And I think Solanke plays a big, big part in that game, as well as he grabbing one, um, grabbing some goals. But at the same mm-hmm. time, he was holding the ball up. He's bringing players in to the game. With Jordan Ibe, though, um, a player with a lot of potential, but Mm -hmm. yeah, did let us down. But when you look at the Bournemouth squad as well, though, Rob, are you surprised not to see us competing with yourselves at the top of that table? On paper, um, I suppose I am quite surprised to see Bournemouth where they are. Um, And I think it it goes back to pre-season, really, and what happened there. Um, I mean, when we came down, I think it was a case, really, of Daniel Farker thinking, right, OK, what's happened has happened. We'll dust ourselves down, we'll get up and we'll go on with it again. Um, I mean, I really can't comment on how Jason Tindall um, handled Bournemouth's pre-season last year. But, I mean, was there something that happened then which led to, you know, where Bournemouth are now? Um I mean, I can think of, you know, other Norwich sides which have been relegated from the Premiership. I mean, classic example, 2005, 2006 came down. We lost the players. We brought a few in um, and we finished ninth. And I mean, that season was, you know, I'd say quite similar to the one Bournemouth are having right now. Um, So, yes, I am a little bit surprised. Of course, we we did sell Ake, Wilson, um, Mm. Ramsdale. Of course, Fraser left as well um, Mm -hmm. under a bit of a cloud. But, you know, still, there was such a good nucleus of that side that, you know, really, I I would have expected us to be fighting for the top two. Um, Mm -hmm. But Norwich do have some fantastic players um, Mm -hmm. that you've managed to keep hold of this season. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. Pookie, Wondia, Cantwell, that's just to name a few. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How was Daniel Farker managed to keep hold of those sorts of players because they were well on, well in demand, really, weren't they, Rob? Yeah, well, I mean, it always goes back to the club's philosophy of selling players, and that is we're not going to sell anyone for any price to any club. Um, it's always been quite a selective way we deal with um, business in that respect. So classic example, if I go back to the summer of 2018, we had James Madison playing for us. So this is someone who's now ripping it up every week for Leicester in the top four. And when we sold James Madison, OK, we got a good fee for him, which was one thing. But the other big thing was selling him to a club where he was going to get first team football every week. And I mean, since he's joined Leicester, he's been a regular starter. And that's the key thing, really. I mean, the way we look at it is we want the best move for the player when they go on. I mean, if we look back through, um, you know, look, look at how long we've both been football fans. And um, I mean, how many transfers out there we've seen where a club has spent lots and lots of money on somebody and then put them on the bench and never given them a chance, particularly with younger players. 
So that's it. I mean, we tend to look after the best interests of the players when we sell them. So that's a big thing. Um, and if I look at um, Campwell and Bundy, I mean, funnily enough, I mean, this goes back to the time when we played Bournemouth earlier this season. And those two weren't really in the side around that point. And Farker criticised them publicly for their attitude, but he did it in the right way. And it got a response out of them. And I think that was probably the other reason as well why those two weren't sold on. Um, maturity wise, they probably weren't ready for it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's it. I mean, the other good one as well was Max Ahrens. I mean, Max Ahrens has been linked with Barcelona. He's been linked with Bayern Munich. Barcelona even contacted us about him last year. And allegedly we said to them, you know, he's not going anywhere. And what Barcelona wanted to do um, was to have him on a, a loan first before um, they signed him permanently. And I think it's fair to say, I mean, you know, if that was the case, um, you know, our sporting director took one, one look at that and thought, hang on a minute, is that really the best thing for the player? Um, do we really want to get some, rid of somebody on a try before you buy basis? So, yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, we have our ways and means of doing this, really. And to be honest, you know, it, it has worked because yeah. you you were finished, you know, bottom of the table. You were quite mm. a few points behind us, um, yep. to say the least. Mm -hmm. But Farkas really used that to fire Norwich mm -hmm. up. And mm -hmm. have turned them into, you know, I can't see you not going up as champions now. You know, there's so much of a gap now um, to mm -hmm. Watford in second, where... It, it looks like it's it's pretty much done and dusted. Are you are you feeling that as well, or are you not resting on your laurels and thinking there's still a bit of a job to be done? Ah, uh, where do I begin with that one? Um, <laughs> um, part of me really doesn't want to commit to anything at this stage, but I suppose I have to. Um, I think it's ours to lose now to be really, really fair. Um, I mean, if I look at the gap between us and Bournemouth, it's a large gap. Um, yeah. Mathematically, we must be, I mean, guaranteed a playoff place by now at the very least. Um, and I think, I mean, if you look at the way we've been playing, I mean, don't forget, I mean, we had a 10 game unbeaten run. We won nine games, we drew one. And that has really put us where we are now. I and mean, if I go back to the start of that unbeaten run, Last game before that was a 2-0 defeat at Swansea and we were just dreadful. We did not even turn up. Um, but since then, I mean, we've really taken, um, you know, the league to task on that. And it's, I mean, it's put us in a fantastic position. Um, but, I mean, this is it. I mean, if I look at the sides beneath us, Swansea and Brentford, I mean, OK, their form has been a bit indifferent recently. But, I mean, they are still going to push forward and win more games between now and the end of the season. Um, I wouldn't, you know, put a, a charge beyond Watford. Reading, well, I'm sorry, I know you come from Reading, where well, we both do, and I know you used to be a Reading fan, um, but we all know that Reading are very inconsistent, and I'm amazed they're still in the top six. And if I look at the sides beneath that, I can see Barnsley racing up into the top six and um, being the surprise package. And, I mean, if I look at our run-in, I mean, we've still got to play Bournemouth, Watford and Reading at home, and we've got to play Barnsley away. Yeah. Now, if I look at the cushion of points we've got, that's put us in a really good place going into those games. So let's wait and see what happens. I mean, the other thing as well, which is quite promising is, I mean, when I look back to the end of the 2018-2019 season, we, we drew four games in a row coming up to the end of the season and we pretty much limped over the line, as it were. I mean, I remember Reading at home, um, late equaliser, Sheffield Wednesday at home, late equaliser, Wigan away, late equaliser, Stoke away, another, you know, relatively late equaliser in those games. And yeah, I mean, and you did think then when you looked at what we were doing, have we blown it? Are we going to blow it? Is there enough cushion there? Um, now we've got that cushion this time, but yeah, I mean, this is it. I mean, there's still lots of games left. So we've really got to keep on mopping up points. And of course, earlier on in the season, um, yeah. Bournemouth were one of the teams to actually beat Norwich. Yeah. Um, what was your view of that game? 
Um, I'll be honest, I didn't actually watch it. Um, <laughs> but we haven't read the reports and spoken to those who had. I mean, I mean, what everyone said at the time was we had all of the possession, we had all of the ball, but Bournemouth scored with one chance and that was it. Um, and I think, I mean, if I look back to that um, time of the season, it was right at the very start. And yeah. I mean, I mean, to be fair, I mean, this season we didn't have a great start whatsoever. I mean, you know, a few days after that game, we lost at home to Derby. And then after that, we went on that run, which got us up to where we are now, near enough. And I think it was one of those games whereby um, Farker looked at the start we had. He looked at the way we were playing and thought, Why, right, OK, we need to tweak one or two things here um, and then things will start to happen. And I think that's what actually did happen. Um it's interesting to see how, um, you know, our, our respective fortunes have played out since then. Yeah, because at the start of the season, you know, it was looking very, very promising, um, mm. especially after beating uh, Barnsley 4-0 at Oakwell, mm-hmm. which mm. was a fantastic performance. Um, mm. It looked like we could beat anybody on our day. The mm. 5-0 against Huddersfield, Huddersfield were poor that day. Um, mm. admittedly, but we really did put them to the sword. I think since yeah. then we've been beaten by Sheffield Wednesday twice yep. and we've had some very funny results. We got beat by Derby. Um, mm-hmm. Our game recently against Swansea was fantastic, a 3-0 mm. win. Um, we looked back to our very best but it's the inconsistency really more than anything. Yeah. And that and, is... I mean, this is the thing about this league though because... Um, I mean, this is it. I mean, anyone can beat anyone on their day. Mm-hmm. It's a very, very unpredictable league. And this is it. I mean, you will see a side at the top. I mean, for argument's sake, having won five games in a row, they'll then go and lose badly to the side right at the bottom. It happens every week. Well, look at Barnsley, for example. Barnsley yeah. were on a fantastic run and then yeah. got beat by Sheffield Wednesday, which nobody ever really saw coming, did they? No. Um, I mean, if I look at the games we've lost this season, I think if there's one, I mean, I mean, apart from the Swansea game um, a few weeks ago, I mean, the only other one where we played really badly, um, I'd say was Luton when we lost 3-1. I think it was back in December. Um, <laughs> I mean, this is it. I mean, every so often, I mean, you will go on those nice long unbeaten runs, but they will come to an end. And when they do, it can be quite spectacular. Again, I mean, if I go back to the 2018-29 um, season, we had, you know, good long runs where we were winning games, we were getting points. Um, but every so often, we would lose to somebody and then we would just, you know, go on, win the next game and go on again. Um, so, yes, I mean, it, that's what that league's like. Well, we've got a little bit of a task to do now because... Mm. We're going to predict how this is all going to pan out um, this season. So, um, there's nine games left to go. Um, Mm -hmm. Of course, you're at the very top. Mm -hmm. Would you put money on Norwich staying there at this point and going up automatically? Tough one, isn't it? Uh, I think when I look at our form, I would be quite surprised if we didn't do it, to be fair. Um, And if I look at, um, I mean, you know, the points we've got now and what we've got left to play for. um, I mean, we're now on 83 points. We have 27 left to play for. Um, You need 90, um, I'd say, to get um, second place. Um, if I look back at the other time, so 2004 and 2019, when we won the league, it was 94 points on both occasions. Um, I think, yeah, I mean, I mean, we certainly got that within it, you know, to do it. Um, so we, we've got that in us to do that. Um, but I mean, to be fair, I mean, it would be quite nice if we top 100 points. I'd be quite shocked if we did it, actually. I mean, it'd be a very nice surprise. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I reckon we will probably be around about the 94, 95 point mark. And who do you think will follow you up in second? Because it's a real mix at the moment. Uh, Swansea have been on a bad run of form. Brentford are very indifferent. Although saying that, earlier on in the season, when we got beat by Brentford, I thought Brentford would walk away with the league. I I honestly did at that point. I thought Brentford were the best side that I'd seen so far this season. But since then, you know... It's all about the points, and they've comp- the re- 
wheels have completely come off, haven't they, at times? Yeah, well, this is it, really. I mean, if you look at what the league table's like at the moment, don't forget Swansea and Brentford have both got a game in hand. If they win that, that puts them both on over 70 points and it puts them um, either three points or four points behind Watford. Um, and don't forget, I mean, Watford has still got to come and play us. And if we beat them, and of course, you know, Swansea and Brentford have made up ground, then one of them will overtake it. So it's going to be quite a tight run. Um, I mean, it depends whether you want the heart or the head, really, to answer that question. Um, I mean, it's quite a quite a funny one, really. Um, I mean, I mean, if Watford don't come up, I mean, I have nothing against Watford as a football club, apart from the way their owners, you know, sack their managers every five minutes. Yeah. Um, not a big fan of the way they do it. Um, and to be fair, Vicarage Road, I've been there so many times and it isn't the greatest place in the road. So I'd be quite uh, in the world. Sorry, so I wouldn't be, um, you know, you know, that disappointed that they don't come up, even though it is quite a close and easy game to get to. Um, I mean, I reckon, I mean, I would like to see either Swansea or Brentford um, come up in second place. I mean, Swansea is a favourite away day of mine. Um, and also, I mean, if you look at Brentford, I mean, they haven't played in the top division for the best part of 70 years. So it would be good to see another new name in the Premiership. Um, coming up through the playoffs, I mean, that's where it gets interesting. Um, I mean, what we've got to remember is Barnsley have hit form right at the, you know, at the right time here. Yeah. Um, and I can see Barnsley win winning the playoffs. Um, looking at Reading, they're too inconsistent. Um, and I wouldn't be too surprised if Reading fall out of the playoffs and um, you see a late charge from um, Bournemouth to replace them. And I mean, again, I mean, look at Cardiff. I mean, look at how well Mick McCarthy's done since he replaced Neil Harris. Look at that run of form they've been on. I mean, when Neil Harris left, they were, you know, in a relegation battle pretty much. But now yeah. um, they could easily sneak into the playoffs. So, yeah, I mean, it's, I reckon it's going to be an interesting end. Yeah, I don't disagree with you there. Um, I do personally think Reading are inconsistent. They've got mm. a very talented side. They've got a very young side. Yeah. A side mm. that does have those young stars in them. Mm. In it, sorry, I should say. But at the same time, they they are inconsistent. Um, mm. They have been down the, the bottom end of the league the past couple of years. And let's be fair, if they finish how they mm. started this season, yeah. you know... They could be dangerous, yeah. but they're not showing they that. Be. Well, I mean, one thing I will say about Reading, and I think, I mean, it goes back to what you just said now um, about, um, you know, where Reading were a couple of years ago. I mean, to be fair, if you look at the squad they've got this season, it isn't really that different, you know, that much different from the squad they had last season or the season before that, really. Um, yeah. So I think, I mean, for Reading to go from where they were to where they are now, I mean, in fairness, that's a hell of a turnaround, really. So, I mean, if they're being inconsistent, that's probably not a bad thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Barnsley, um, yeah. again, a side who we recently were beaten by. First half, we played yeah. well. Second half, um, the wheels completely come off again. Mm -hmm. um, with, with them, they do seem... You know, they, they have, like you say, hit the form at the right time. But mm -hmm. they've had that dodgy result against Sheffield Wednesday just before this international break. Yeah. Do you think that it's it's come at the wrong time? Because I'm sure that the Barnsley manager, um, Ishmael, was probably hoping to get three points to recover from that straight away. Now the players have probably had, well, the had two weeks where that's been probably on their mind well i mean we played sheffield wednesday away a few weeks ago and we found ourselves one nil down within the opening five minutes thanks to a defensive error mm. but we came back and we won it 2-1 um so we fared a little bit better against them and we've taken six points off sheffield wednesday this year um i mean one thing i will say about barnsley final game season it's norwich at home that's going to make it interesting. So, I mean, going into that game, I would like to think our season is concluded. We're up. We're champions. And, I mean, if Barnsley need, you know, to get a point against us or something to go up, then I think, yeah, you could probably sacrifice yourself to, you know, see that happen. Um, but, I mean, this is it. I mean, it's it's.
it, it will be the most concise which stay in there. So how do you think, well, what, what do you reckon the positions will be? So who do you think, you know, with, with your head now, Rob, um, <laughs> who do you think will actually go up with Norwich? Um, I reckon it will be Swansea and I reckon it will be Barnsley. And Barnsley through the playoffs. Yeah. And who do you reckon will be the playoff finalists with Barnsley? I can see it being Barnsley Brentford. Can you? No, fair yeah. enough. Do yeah. you think the Sherries will finish in the playoffs so? Well, I mean if Bournemouth can start to pick up wins and Reading continue to do what they've been doing, you know, quite often this season, then I can see Bournemouth getting up there. And the thing is, is if it is Brentford, I think mm. Brentford know how to play against us. They were very, very yep. good. Um, yep. But I think they have, you know, hit a bad run of form. And, mm. you know, I, I've i got to agree. I think it will probably be Swansea. They do look resolute. Mm. They've had a little bit of wobbly mm. period themselves. Um, mm. But, yeah, it's, um, it's going to be an interesting end. But, Say, for example, if you do go up, which looks like it's going to happen, yeah. what do Norwich need to do differently next season? If I look at the learnings from last season, one of the biggest one was game management, to be fair. Um, I mean, going back to what I was saying earlier, our approach was a little bit gung-ho and we were found out on a fair few occasions. Now, if I look at the way we play at the moment, we don't do that anymore. Um, I mean, let's say for argument's sake, I mean, if the opposition have been trying to attack us and they've had a decent spell of possession for about five minutes, the chances are we will get the ball. We will just pass it around between the back four and the midfield or between the midfield and the back four, something like that for a few minutes to take the sting out of the game before we then try and hit somebody on the counter attack. Um, so the key thing for me next season is going to be um, the game management. Um now, if we can get, you know, replicate what we were doing, you know, what we've been doing so far this season, I think we'll probably stand a good chance. Um, the second thing as well, I mean, we've acknowledged we made mistakes in the transfer market um, last season. Um, so I'd like to think this time when we do do it, um, those mistakes won't be made again. I would like to think that Farker will be given this time a decent budget to work with. Um I'd like to think there, I mean, if we do make any loan signings, I mean, Ollie Skip the season has been a fantastic piece of loan business. Um, that, I mean, if we do bring in loan players, it's one. I mean, last season we had more than one. So and that, that can create a bit of an imbalance, really, I think. So, yep. Yeah, so, I mean, some sensible business in the transfer market, I think will probably stand a good chance. I mean, if I look at the sides who've gone up this season, um, I mean... <sighs> Fulham, I think Fulham are going to, you know, pull their way out of it, I think. I mean, you know, West Brom are going to go down. They'll they'll, they'll go down with Sheffield United very easily. But I can see, um, you know, Fulham, you know, keeping up. Um, I mean, Leeds, I mean, they spent God knows how much money in the summer. So, but yeah, I mean, look at the players they've got. They'll be fine. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think we've learned from it. And I think next season will hopefully be a bit different if we go up. Well, thank you for joining me on this show, Rob. It's an absolute pleasure to have another chat with you again mm. and all the very best next season. Because I think, personally, I think you've done it. I do think you've done it. Um, and Well, this is it. Lots of managers, I mean, lots of the opposition managers have been saying we've done it. But every time that's happened, Daniel Farker has rightfully turned around and said, no, we haven't yet. And to be fair, we haven't. So I think, I mean, there's going to be a lot of drama between now and the end of the season we I mean we've both been football following football long enough to know what this league's like now if I go back I think it must have been yeah I've been 2015-2016 season so that was Chris Hewton's first full season in charge of Brighton um they were very good to watch and I mean they were in the promotion race all season, they missed out on automatic promotion on the final day of the season. I think it was on goal difference by a goal or something like that. And I think, I mean, they had enough points which any other season would probably have got you second place. Um, so it, it will be tight. It will go to the wire. Well, yeah, thank, thank you so much for joining me, Rob. 
and all the Pleasure. very, very best. No problem, mate. Really enjoyed it. And thank you for joining me on this show. Please do hit the like, subscribe and the bell bu button to be alerted to all of our new videos. Until the next one, up the cherries and I'll see you then.